everybody, welcome to Front Porch Fridays. Uh, my name is Jeff Goki, and uh, this is my front porch. Uh, and every Friday we come out here and we, we take a passage of scripture and we, we go a little deeper with it. Um, I have to be honest, I've, I spent a lot of time on this porch this week. Um, a lot of time praying, crying, confused, disillusioned, frustrated, angry. Maybe some of you felt that way this week. In fact, I, I really even wasn't sure if I was going to do this. I wasn't sure if we were going to record this and post this because there's just so much brokenness. But like so often, like the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. It allows us in the midst and the murkiness of and the pain of all that's happening to give us some kind of guidance. And so that's what this week I've just asked God for guidance. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for comfort. And in this passage that we're, we're going to, to go through today has been a passage, an anchor passage for me in the last few months. And it, and it came to me again this week and it has really been helpful in the midst of a lot of chaos and a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. And so I thought we would go through that passage uh, together, and it's Second Corinthians 1:20, and, and it says this: "So matter, so no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through Him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Have you?" ever understood how important a promise is like when i got married like i never I, I thought getting married was you know really cool but i never realized how massive that promise was i never realized how massive the commitment was to having kids or or even like a mortgage or, or friendship right how massive it is to make those promises make those commitments and what we know and this passage helps us understand that is this that that, that according to scholars, God has made somewhere in the scriptures around 8,000, some say more, 8,000 promises. And it's sometimes in the midst of not knowing what to do and not knowing where to go that we go, I need to hear from God. I need to know some of these promises he's made to us, his creation. And so a few of these promises have really stuck out to me this week. And so I thought I'd share those with you. You know, one of the promises that he's made is that, that, that God is, he's with me. He's with you. He's not agnostic. He's not far away. I know it may feel that way, but he's not. He's right near you. In Hebrews 4, it talks about that we don't have a high priest who's just far away. We have one who can sympathize, empathize with our humanity, empathize with the brokenness and the confusion. He is with us, and I have found comfort in that this week. Uh, one of the other promises that I love is that, that God is in control. When everything feels chaotic, when there seems to be no answers, when there seems to be no direction, everything feels, for the most part, ambiguous and painful. We can bank on the fact that God is still in control. And so often we said he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that he is in control. And that we can bank on. That we can trust. When we can't trust a lot, we can trust that that God is good and I know maybe that's hard to hear it's hard to hear when it feels like there's evil all around us like how is God good how does he see us but he's good good exists because God exists he's the uncreated creator good flows out of him that ethic is because God exists God is good even in the midst of awful violence, unrest, and racism, God is still good. And God is our provider. He's providing for us. And maybe that's a scary place. Maybe you felt like, I don't know how I'm going to be taken care of. I don't know what my tomorrow looks like. I don't even know what my today looks like. God is in control. God is with you. God is good. And he is your provider. He is Jehovah Jireh your and my provider. But here's the thing that stood out in this passage to me that I really want to 
really want to convey right, convey right now is like this. Jesus is the yes. According to this passage, Jesus is the yes to all of God's promises. He's the one that has restored it all. Christ opened the door for all the promises, all the promises that God has for us. Today, maybe you just need to hear that. That no matter what happens, good or bad, we are the people that God loves so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Christ opened his yes opens the door for salvation, opens the door. And what is our response to that? Our response is amen, which means so be it, which means your will, your way, your glory, which means in the good, it's so be it. In the bad, so be it. Because Jesus' yes changed everything. Jesus' yes changes us. So what we need to do in response to that is to let our amen not just be in word, not just be something that we say out loud, but in the way in which we live our lives. We are the image bearer of Christ, of God Almighty. We are his image bearers, the Imago Dei. We're all made in his image for his glory. Jesus dies on the cross to open the door for all of God's promises for us. And so we respond to that and we say, amen, not just in word, but in deed and in the way in which we live our lives. So where do you, like this is the question I've been working through, where do you and I need to live out our amen right now? Maybe there's a promise that you need to grab onto in the midst of this ambiguity and hurt and pain. And I want you to know the greatest fulfillment of those promises was Jesus. His yes opened the door for all of those promises that God has for you and I. <sighs> Praying for you, hurting with you, wherever you are, know that God loves you, he sees you, He's near you, he cares for you, and would you find comfort in that? Grace and peace to you. We'll see you next time.